What if we chose the broccoli instead of the chocolate cake? When we... Wait, wait, hold on. First, why did we not choose the broccoli over the chocolate cake? Why not vegetable-powered, invigorating, health, fitness, vitality? Why the cake? Well... Because one of them seems more attractive, right? More appealing to the palate. One of them is more pleasurable. At least for a little while. Then we generally could feel bad. We get sluggish, sleepy, lazy. And to the degree that the cake eating continues, if we eat more and more cake... Our metabolism is degraded. Immunity is weakened. Then obesity, disease, possibly diabetes. And then they started turning black. And this is what they look like now. Stroke. If all we ate were cake, certainly early death, suffering. So why would we choose the excitement-suffering combo over the vitality and health combo? Well, as we have established, solely because it tastes good. It was exciting to the senses. People tend to be tempted by the excitement of external stimulation. It's a common thing to happen, especially in capitalist consumer societies. Plato predicted that citizens of democratic governments would have poor diets. The Western mindset often seeks the passionate. We choose the thrill, the taboo, even outright fear, the ups and downs. <laughs> the horror film. It's commonplace. The anxiety seems strangely appealing. When we swallow a sugary processed food, the adrenal glands squeeze out adrenaline and fatigue. The heart races. We become energized by anxiety. Whether it's the rush from sugars or the thrill of horror scenes, indulging the senses is a learned behavior. That is to say, we are conditioned. The capitalist monetary system and their corporations have excelled at conditioning our behavior, preying on that behavior, and profiting from it. But it turns out that there's also some physiology involved, and psychology. Lab rats tell a story about this. In a famous experiment, a small electrode was placed in a rat brain's pleasure center, called the nucleus accumbens. It regulates dopamine production and is the area that lights up when gamblers win a bet. Drug addicts do cocaine and people have orgasms. A lever in the cage allowed the rats to send a small electrical signal directly to their nucleus accumbens. They liked it so much that they did nothing else. Similar experiments have been performed with humans. Heath even let his patients control their own stimulation. I find his button the best. That's number most, two button. Most pleasurable. Mm -hmm. how, how do you feel? Notice how she continuously pushes her button, almost unconsciously. The rats, they just press the lever over and over again until they died of starvation and exhaustion. Sound familiar? A 30-year-old man recently died after playing video games continuously for three days. People eat with gluttony until they can barely function. Addictions abound. It seems sometimes that we are helpless to overcome this animal urge for easy indulgence. This has been posed as more than a physiological or psychological problem, but a challenge of human consciousness, even a spiritual cause. Note, 
all the major religions have fasting regimens to strengthen the will. I mean, at the end of a meal, I'm sad. I'm licking every little last crumb off the plate because I don't want this to end. And right there, we discover the longing for something infinite. We want the feast never to end. Why then does the church ask us to fast, especially during Lent? <laughs> Best benefit is if you do the fasting not for the physical aspect only, for the, for the spiritual aspect, you will going to burn a lot of karmas. When you burn a lot of karma, your soul begins to awaken. If he leads the human system, there's going to be a train wreck. If he leads the human system, something's going to go wrong. About face. He's supposed to lead the system. He's supposed to be the caboose. Self-discipline is deemed valuable in spiritual circles. Chemical dependency, external stimulation, is considered weakness. Finding our strengths and motivations internally is thought to be more human. Eventually, we can... Uh, we can develop more deeper sorosity kasoda experience about our life. And the self-discipline to resist sensual urges inevitably results in greater fitness, health, and vigor. It begs the rhetorical question, are we simply like the single-celled amoeba? Seeking pleasure and avoiding pain? Are we the rat, helplessly pushing the lever forever to our detriment? Animals would continue for hours and hours and didn't seem to satiate. They didn't feel full. They would just keep doing it for long, long periods of time. They would do it to exhaustion. Now, I will electrify the grid. The animal must cross an area that gives a very painful shock to the feet in order to get to the pedal and stimulate the brain. And a rat wanting brain stimulation would brave a shock stronger than even a starving rat would brave to get food. Are we a slave to our base desires? Or can we be self-determining, self-motivated by a vision of a better life, because we can choose. We can choose between indulgence, gluttony, excited, lust, anxious, sloth, or peaceful, steady, solid, satisfying, contented, healthy, calm. It's a paradigm shift. What would happen if we chose the broccoli over the chocolate cake? A different life. Because, we all know this, you are what you eat. A new consciousness led by clear intention. Freed from conditioning. Freed from animal urge freed from the slavery of an amoeba or rat. So I said, well, what about, I got born again. Yeah, you got born again. You got born again and you're going to heaven, but you will not be successful on this earth with a mind that's dominated and joined to that physical body with those senses. So if you're just interested in going to heaven while you live 50 years of hell, how many of you are interested in it? I'm not. I am interested in having some heaven on this earth while I'm in this body. I'm interested in having some little heaven on this And the sooner we start to take notice of this, the sooner we start to value those small choices and build a right foundation for ourselves, the sooner we are happy. The physical is always a doorway to the spiritual. There's a deeper hunger we have. There's a deeper thirst we have, isn't there? It allows us to feel our hunger. 
And so getting in touch with our physical hunger and our physical thirst is meant to get us in touch with our spiritual hunger and our spiritual thirst. But the best thing is when you are in that process, why not to think about your spiritual growth? Because your head going to get clear, clarity. When you have a clarity, you can focus more, you can go deep into the meditation.